Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. In today's video we are going to be reviewing the new Harry Potter and Colourpop collection. I bought the whole thing. I am a huge, huge Harry Potter fan, which we'll get into in a second. But first I wanted to thank you guys so much for all of the outpour of love and support that you showed me um, all throughout the past week. Um, I haven't uploaded in over a week because my grandma passed away and she was the most important person in my life. She showed me what unconditional love looks like and I will forever be grateful for having had her in my life. So thank you so much for all of your love, for all of the prayers and for all of the well wishes. And I wanted to just say that real quick. I'm going to stop talking about it because I have not cried today and I don't want to. <laughs> Besides that, I also wanted to talk about me reviewing this Colourpop and Harry Potter collection. I mentioned in a Will I Buy It video a couple of weeks ago that I really wanted to get everything and review it and some of you were excited some of you were confused and some of you were telling me not to pick up the collection because of the um, JK Rowling, who is the author of Harry Potter, stand on trans people. I am a true believer that everyone should live their lives how they see fit. Everyone should be their most authentic self and I don't share JK Rowling's views. At the same time though, I grew up on Harry Potter. Harry Potter was a huge part of my teenage years. I love the story and I feel like all of the characters in Harry Potter are like family members to me, okay? I just love what they stand for. I think the Harry Potter books are great and I am obsessed with the Harry Potter movies. I have seen them countless times and so there is work from thousands and thousands of people that went into making Harry Potter what it is and that the Harry Potter story and the Harry Potter movement is way way bigger than the author herself and so I just don't want to let what's happening take away the excitement and the love that I feel for the Harry Potter story, for the Harry Potter movies, for the Harry Potter world in general, which like I said has taken thousands and thousands of people's hard work, not just hers. Every time I have thought of a tattoo idea, it's been Harry Potter related, except I've been thinking of getting a tattoo with my grandma's name in her handwriting, but besides that one, Every tattoo I've ever considered, and I don't actually have any, um, has been Harry Potter related. That's like how much it means to me. And during the past week when I was grieving my grandma like crazy, um, the only box of makeup I um, wanted to open <laughs> when I finally got to wanting to look at makeup again was um, this one right here. So yeah, um, we're going to start with the review. As I was saying at the beginning of the video, I bought the whole thing. I spent $174 on the PR box and you can also get the whole collection without the box for $170. So I paid $4 just to show you this blue box <laughs> right here. Besides that, if you just want the eyeshadow palette, that retails for $30. The glosses are $10 each. The eyeliners are $10 each. The balms are $10 each. Not sure about the price of the highlighters, but not too expensive. And they have little house sets that you can get individually if you're a Ravenclaw or a Slytherin or a Gryffindor or Hufflepuff, etc. Anyways, let's get into opening this. I'm going to show you the packaging of everything in detail because with this collection, since I'm such a Harry Potter fan, the packaging is going to be just as important as the collection itself. When you open the PR box, this right here is what you see. It says meet me at platform nine and three quarters and it's got a simpler version of the Hogwarts um, school seal. And then it has a bunch of little drawings all around with the different houses. The box is super cute, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the collection comes with four graphic ink eyeliners, one for each house. And you can take a look right here at the detail that went into 
each and every one of these boxes in the front each one of the house mascots and in the back of the box there is an object that represents each house so we have the slytherin locket ravenclaw's diadem we have the hefepuff cup and the gryffindor sword Lastly, even the sides of all of these boxes are really cute. Once you open the ink liners, this right here is what you see. It says Harry Potter on the front and then right here on the cap, there is a bunch of like little stars and lightning bolts. I really wish they would have taken the colors of each house to the inside packaging of the eyeliners. I really wish that there was a blue, a yellow, a red, and a blue one so that I could easily differentiate them rather than having to like look at the bottom of this and I also think that that would have been a lot more on theme so I feel like they missed an opportunity there I really wish that they would have done that I'm going to go ahead and swatch the eyeliners to show you what they look like take a look right here at what the swatches look like as you can see the Gryffindor and Hufflepuff swatches which is red and yellow are metallic colors and the Ravenclaw and Slytherin swatches which are blue and green are more on the matte side and I got these swatches in one go I didn't go over any of these lines so they seem to be pigmented but like I said I just really wish that they would have made the packaging with the different colors that would have made my Harry Potter fan hearts very happy <laughs> here we have the exterior boxes of each one of the lip balms again each one of the houses are represented they have the house mascots and i really like that these have the house um words or the house features like when you're in harry potter and you get sorted into your house most of the people who are smart go to Ravenclaw or brave go to Gryffindor like they put students of similar characteristics together in each house right so Gryffindor right here on the side says bravery courage determination Ravenclaw says learning wit wisdom Slytherin says ambition pride cunning and then Hufflepuff says dedication patience and loyalty right there so again the exterior boxes of these amazing and i love the length they went with the details let's see what the inside looks like all right they did do it with the lip balm so they could have definitely done it with the eyeliners each one of these lip balms has a color according to the house that it represents it has the house mascots on there the logo etc i really like the packaging of these it's not like luxurious or anything i wasn't expecting luxury but i do like that it's on theme with the actual collection i'm not expecting to see difference in color when it comes to the lip balms but i'm going to try and swatch them to see if anything happens <laughs> pretty much nothing at all this is the gryffindor one up here this is the ravenclaw one down here there is like a teeny tiny bit of a hint of blue but nothing that will be noticeable, especially once you put it on the lips. So these are pretty much fully clear. Now, when it comes to the packaging of the little things like eyeliners, lipsticks, lip balms, etc. By far, the best packaging is the lip gloss packaging. Just take a look right here at how absolutely adorable this is. We have the Hermione gloss, the Ronald Weasley gloss, the Harry Potter gloss and the luna love good gloss and right here on the back you can see things that identify each character like hermione books and the cats weasley gets the gryffindor sword and the chocolate frog harry plays quidditch so he has a broom and i'm assuming that is a snitch and then luna has the glasses um, that she wears to see the little creatures I forgot the name of them but anyways these boxes are super super cute and i don't plan on throwing them away <laughs> i'm going to be honest i love the artwork at the front of these lip gloss boxes 
Take a look at what the packaging of the glosses looks like and in this case I do get it that they all have the same cap because three of them are in the same house and then Luna is um, in Ravenclaw so I get that all of the caps are the same. This is not like divided by houses so I'm not going to complain about them all having the same cap in this case. Anyways, this one right here is the Luna gloss. This one is the Ron Weasley gloss, Hermione, and the red one is the Harry Potter um, gloss. Just kidding, for some reason I thought they were glasses, but they're not. They're actually, three of them at least, are Lux Velvet lipsticks. So they have this velvety, almost matte finish, and then Luna is an actual lip gloss. But these three are velvet lipsticks. I don't think I've ever tried that formula from ColourPop, so I can't wait to see what that feels like on the lips. I'm assuming it's going to be good. <laughs> Next, we have the three Super Shock highlighters, and these are made inspired by magical creatures. So we have Hedwig right here, who is Harry Potter's owl. We have Dobby, um, which I know is everyone's favorite. If you've watched Harry Potter, you love Dobby the Free Elf, and then Buckbeak right here, and let me show you what the inside of these look like. I adore the outside packaging and the illustrations they made for all of the creatures, and I did already peek at what these look like inside. I hadn't seen anything else but the highlighters, and I have beef with the packaging of the highlighters, okay? <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> Take a look right here at what the outside packaging of these highlighters look like. Please hate it with me because why? I really wish they would not have done plastic packaging for these. I really wish that they would have done cardboard for this because with cardboard they could have put this exact same image on the outside of the highlighter and that would have been a thousand times better. This right here looks simple and it looks cheap and it even makes this blue plastic look ugly. I don't like it. I wish that they would have done cardboard for this. I feel like that would have been such an easy switch because it's a highlighter. It doesn't have to be packaged in plastic. Anyways, this right here is Dobby. My Dobby came broken so I pressed it back together. This one is Bachbeak right here. And my favorite, just from looking at the pan, is Hedwig, because she is super light and dreamy. So let's see what these swatch like. Here's Hedwig, Dobby, and Bachbeak. I actually really love all three of those swatches. They feel very creamy, and I can't wait to put them on the face. But I really wish they would have done cardboard for these. And now for sure what I consider to be the star of the show, the eyeshadow palette. The exterior packaging of the eyeshadow palette is so dreamy. It looks like a book and I love it. It is so nice. It has the silhouettes of the Hogwarts seal right here. It has a little mascots of the houses on the corner. It has little symbols that represent Harry Potter. Once you take the sleeve off, it pretty much looks the exact same on the inside, which I love. Cardboard packaging. I really wish they would have done this for the highlighters. Before I show you the inside, here's the back and you can see all of the names of the shadows back there and it says back to Hogwarts, just like a book just like a book. And now for the moment of truth, let's open it up. So here is what you get inside. On this side, we have that Hogwarts logo um, and some of these same drawings we've been seeing all throughout the collection. And on the inside of the palette, we have the Marauders map, which I love. And I totally didn't notice at first. One of my friends pointed it out to me when I was showing her the palette um, on FaceTime because I was that excited about it. <laughs> um, so you can see the names of the shades as if they were people walking in Hogwarts through the map, which I love. And the name of the shades are so freaking cute. I'll tell you all of the names once I swatch them. I just love the color story. It has all of the Hogwarts colors, but it's still a nice 
wearable palette, which I really love. You have a Slytherin green, a Gryffindor red, you have a Hufflepuff yellow. I feel like they could have done a little bit of a more intense yellow maybe for Hufflepuff. And then you also have a Ravenclaw blue, which also could have been maybe a little bit more blue. I don't know. All in all though, like big picture, I really love the color story of this palette. And besides the few packaging things I wish they would have done differently, I think overall I really am happy with the packaging of everything and the way the palette looks. So let's go ahead and swatch this beauty. Take a look right here at the shade Loomis, Floating Candles, Marauder's Map, which is a great transition shade. Liquid Luck. I'm going over it because I did terrible at first. Then we have Whooping Willow, Hufflepuff, Golden Snitch, and Pumpkin Juice. Third row, we have Mandrake. That was so smooth. Um, Invisibility Cloak, Butterbeer, and Gryffindor. So far, by the way, this is such a fall palette right here. I love it. Enchanted Keys, Patronus. Oh, that's pretty. Forbidden Forest. This one's super chunky. It's like a glittery type thing. Then Ravenclaw down here. I've swatched four rows so far and I still have two rows to go. So I'm going to switch to my other arm but these are the swatches so far. Next we have Gillyweed, Great Hall, Nimbus 2000, Slytherin. My friend Andrea was telling me she wishes that the Slytherin shade was a bit more of an intense, lighter green. Like in the seal right here, I would assume, which would have been nice, but honestly, I personally love the dark forest green shades, so I'm not mad at it. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, we have Elder Wand, we have Hungarian Horntail, we have Sorting Hat, and the darkest shade of all, the Mentor down here. Okay, so I have officially swatched everything, and you can take a look right here at what all of these shades look like. As you can see, it has a really good balance of like warmth and also cool tones. And most of the shades swashed really pretty. So I don't think I'll have a lot of issues when putting these on my eyelids. Finally, the moment I've been waiting for it, let's go ahead and play with the palette. I want to start by using the shade Marauder's Map right up here. And I'm going to use it as a base slash transition shade all over the crease of my eye up here. It's not too much darker than the color of my skin, so you're not going to see that much of a difference, but you can definitely see that it's kind of setting the base for whatever color I choose next. With my same refer number 15 brush, I'm going into the color Enchanted Keys because I think this shade is a bit closer to the transition color I was looking for. It's a bit darker, a little bit more cool toned. See, you can definitely see the depth of this one a little bit better than the first one I used. With my refer number one, I want to grab the color Slithering down here, and I'm going to add it to the outer third of my eyelid, right back here by just tapping it in place. I went back a second time just to make the color a bit more opaque, a bit more intense. And now with a clean brush, this is a refer number 14, so a teeny tiny clean brush, I'm going to smoke up that green to blend into the transition shades we used at first. And if some of your green goes away like mine did, just get a little bit more of it with the brush and add it back to your look. I'm going to grab the color Patronus with a refer number 28 and I'm going to tap it over the center of my eyelid and blend it back into that forest green shade. You know what? Maybe I should do a look that has all of the houses. I have Slytherin and Ravenclaw right now and uh, maybe I can add Gryffindor somehow and Hufflepuff. Yes, I think I want to do that. <laughs> so with the refer number 21 brush, I'm going to grab Floating Candles. This is going to be my Hufflepuff color here. It's like a light gold. And I'm going to add it to the inner third of my eyelid. And if you need to bring back a little bit more of the shade Patronus, because we definitely don't want to lose 
are blue. With my same number 21 brush, I'm going to grab the color Loomis and add that to the inner corner of my eye. I went ahead and wiped underneath my eyes because there was a little bit of fallout and I reapplied my concealer and then for my Gryffindor color, I went ahead and used the Sword Eyeliner, which I applied off camera because it's hard for me to apply eyeliner. <laughs> and I actually think it came out really good. I'm feeling a little bit insecure about the amount of colors on my eye right now, but I did choose this theme, didn't I? <laughs> Anyways, for underneath the eye, I'm using the Slithering Green once again, and I'm going to pack it really close to my lower lash line and just smoke it up down here just back and forth and i'm using a rougher number three brush for this with the same number three brush i'm going to use the color ravenclaw and that's going to be the center color underneath the eyes and back to floating candles for the inner third i was looking for a waterline color that would match my sword eyeliner and i found this from lancome it's in the color brick i'm not sure if this is still a thing but i had it so i'm going to use it right in the waterline to make this whole thing hopefully come together this right here is the look before putting any mascara or lashes on i know this is like more colorful for me and probably as colorful as you can get with this eyeshadow palette since i went on with all of the different color stories that the palette has trust me you can get a ton of very natural looking very wearable looks with this palette but i just wanted to go all out okay let me put on some mascara and lashes and i'll be right back to try the highlighters the lipsticks and everything else i'm missing the lashes are on and i also went ahead and put on a little bit of blush this is just my pillow talk blush so let's go ahead and try the highlighters i am dying to try the highlighter in the shade hedwig because it is so beautiful so i'm going to put this one on the highest point of my cheek i'm going to use a small brush this one is a BK Beauty 201 and I'm just going to add it right up here to see what it looks like. And also because I want to mix it with the other two highlighters. So this up here is Hedwig. And honestly, Hedwig is a perfect match for this eye look because it doesn't really have any color. So it just goes beautifully with all of the colors that I have on my eyelids right now. So I'm going to also put it right up here. It's honestly a stunning highlighter, not too intense, a little bit on the natural side for how light it is. So I love the formula of this. I think I might have tried Super Shock highlighters before, but I can't recall to be honest. On this side, I'm going to try Dolby right underneath Hedwig here. And I'm going to just blend it down my cheek a little bit. So this right here is what W looks like. I was scared that it was going to be a little bit too dark for me, but I don't think it is. No, it's not. These are very sheer, so I feel like they're going to look good on a lot of different skin tones. So this is Dobby and Hedwig right here. And then the plan for this side is to use the shade Buckbeak. So right here, a little, ooh, a little much, a little much Buckbeak. Buckbeak is more pewtery and Dobby is a bit more golden. And then Hedwig is the lightest one. Honestly, I really like all of the highlighters. Um, minus the ugly packaging. The packaging of the highlighters is by far the biggest miss of this collection. It should have been cardboard like the palette and it should have the images that are in the box on the cardboard. I really hate how cheap these look. As far as the bombs are concerned, like I said, they don't really have a color, so I'll try one just to kind of feel the texture. They taste sweet, which is strange. I didn't expect them to taste like anything. And they feel just like you're putting butter on your lips. I feel like if you have a kid in your life who loves Harry Potter and they're not really in the age where they want to wear makeup yet, but they do use a lip balm every once in a while, this would be a really cute gift. By the way, if you're a Harry Potter fan like me, please comment down below which house you are in. Um, if you've done the sorting quiz on Pottermore. And if you haven't, I'll leave you the link to the quiz below so you can know what Harry Potter house you belong to. I am a Ravenclaw. I did the quiz a million years ago. <laughs> Time to try the lipsticks and I'm going to start with Harry. 
Harry is like a nicely intense red. Very Gryffindor. <laughs> The swatches of these lipsticks were kind of ugly, so I was really concerned that they wouldn't look even on the lips, but they look really nice and they are going on very evenly as well. I know that with this eye look, this lipstick is a whole lot, but it is a really beautiful shade. I'm going to cover my lips so that you can see it better. No distractions. <laughs> I really, really like this lipstick. I honestly was not expecting to like it at all. I don't know, it didn't really look appealing when I swatched it. Neither did the Ron lipstick, which I'll try next, but I'm not mad at it. And since I've never tried the Luxe Velvet Liquid Lipsticks from Colourpop, I don't know how long they last, so if you have tried it before, let us know down in the comments. Time to try the Ronald Weasley lipstick. I feel like this one's not going on as easily as the Harry Potter one, but it's not bad. It's not as smooth, it's leaving a couple of streaks, if that makes sense, that I've had to go back to even out. Just like the Harry Potter one, it's a lot with this eye look, so I'm going to show you without. <laughs> it's a nice fiery orange shade. Ron is a ginger, so I feel like it's a nice color to be named Ronald Weasley. And I usually am not a fan of super warm color lipsticks so this one unfortunately is not my favorite but if you do like warm toned lipsticks then you can consider it <laughs> let's go ahead and try hermione which is the nudest one so i feel like i'm going to like it and this one's looking like it's smooth here's the shade hermione which i'm also not loving with this eye look and it's also a bit too warm unfortunately not my favorite i don't love it so far Weirdly enough, I feel like my favorite lipstick has been the Harry Potter one because it was unexpected, but it was a blue-toned red, which I love. And here's the Hermione lipstick without my distracting eye look. I like it without the eye look. Maybe, maybe it's just because there's like a lot of blue and cool tones up here. I don't know. <laughs> Finally, let's try the Luna lip gloss. I went ahead and put on a lip liner just to have an outline to my lips and... Let's go for Luna. With this eye look, this is definitely my favorite. Nice eye nude with a cool toned lip liner and the lips are shiny. I'm digging it, so I am going to be keeping this one. I'm not going to use the Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw or um, Slytherin eyeliners because I swatched them already and they don't really go with my eye look. <laughs> I can't possibly add any more colors to these eyes. And so I feel like I pretty much tried everything. I have a nice idea of what everything performs like. The eyeliners, I felt like I had to go back quite a few times with the Gryffindor eyeliner to get it to look nice and pigmented. And even still, you can see it's not like super even all throughout. So it's not the best quality eyeliner I've ever tried. It's not the smoothest but it got the job done. The eyeshadows I did really like. I feel like they pretty much performed really well. And again, I went all out with the colors that I tried, but there are a lot of neutral, very wearable colors in this palette that you can use. If you were expecting more vibrant than like what I'm wearing right now, it doesn't really have that much more vibrancy to it. But all in all, I feel like they made a wearable palette that is inspired by the Harry Potter world and I really did like it. Plus it's a pretty big palette from Colourpop and you can get it for $30. Of course, the links to all of these are going to be down below in the description box. The lip balms are the one thing in the collection that I really didn't feel the necessity of buying, but I bought them just because I wanted to get the whole thing. However, now that I've tried them, I do really like the formula. It's clear, it's a balm, don't expect much from it. But I do think that they're nice. <laughs> as far as the lipstick products, my favorite was definitely the Luna lip gloss. And then I also really liked the Harry Potter red lipstick. That was awesome. The eyeliners, like I said, they're not a must have. And I do really wish that they would have made the packaging the colors of the houses. That would have been ideal. The biggest disappointment for me were definitely the highlighters. And it has nothing to do with the performance of them because I do 
really like the way they performed. You can definitely see them on my cheeks and I did build it up. You can also have it look a lot more natural than this, but I just hate this packaging so much, especially because they did such a fantastic job when it came to the artwork on the outside boxes, which by the way, I'm going to be keeping because I like this more than this. <laughs> Um, they did such a fantastic job with the outside of this. I just really wish that just like they did with the palette, the highlighters would have been cardboard packaging so they could have that pretty artwork on the outside. In my opinion, that would have been ideal and I would have absolutely loved all of that. So that is kind of where my thoughts are at when it comes to the collection. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am the biggest Harry Potter fan, so I knew that I was going to enjoy this collection no matter what, but um, I do think that, you know, Colourpop did do a good job. It's not perfect and there's definitely room for improvement, but I'm going to go ahead and rate it like a 8 out of 10. I feel like that's kind of where I'm at. Maybe like a 7.5. 7.5 out of 10 is what I'm going to give it. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. And also don't forget to let me know your Harry Potter house down there. I am happy to be back. I'm taking it slow still, but you guys will be seeing more videos um, hopefully coming up this week. Um, so yeah, I love you guys so, so much. Again, thank you so much for all of the love and all of the support that you guys um, gave me for all of the prayers, all of the well wishes. Um, everything was truly truly from the bottom of my heart very appreciated um i'll see you guys in the next video totally forgot please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and if you're new to my channel welcome my name is patty and i would love it if you were here to stay so please subscribe before you leave <laughs> bye